Empower Radio presents The Farkas Files, an exploration of energy, metaphysics, and the paranormal with David Franklin Farkas. The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere. Here's your host, David Franklin Farkas. Good evening. Thanks for being with us again tonight as we await yet another snowstorm. What an interesting winter it's turned out to be. My guest this evening is the wonderful Eva Herr, who's been with us several times before. Um, and this time we're going to be talking about uh, a fascinating topic, attraction, attractor fields, which is her way of saying something that I think I say differently. We're going to have a good time talking about that. But first, tonight's metaphysical musing. And kind of in line with um, what we're going to talk about tonight, um, when I was growing up, one of the things that people always said was, be careful what you ask for. You might get it. And that's exactly right. Um, people will just say things because it feels good to say them. People will get upset about things. People will do all kinds of stuff and never think that it has any effect on their life or what's going on around them. And that's just plain not true. Everything has an effect on what's going on. So the way all of this works is the more you focus on something and the more emotion you put on in focusing on something, the more you're going to get whatever you focused on. You're giving it energy. What you focus on expands. What you focus on comes towards you. Um, and people do that all the time, but they do it mostly with stuff that they don't like. You get upset about something and you start focusing on that and you talk to all your friends and you have a pity party and um, you whine about it. And every time there's more emotion to it and you just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, you think that's working? Yeah. And then when it happens, you get to say, see, I told you. I knew that was going to happen. Well, yeah, you put all your focus on that, and it's what came to you. But if you've ever watched a little kid who really, 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 really wants something, and that's all they think about, and they get really excited about it, and they think about how great it'll be to have the dog, the bike, you know, whatever the thing is, and the same thing happens with them. They focus on it, and they focus on it, and they put a lot of emotion. In this case, it's positive emotion. And somehow, seemingly magically, they attract to themselves some way that they get what they want. So there's kind of a third, well, a variation on this, which people usually don't think of, and that's worry. And worry is actually a woodworking term where you worry something until, until it's the right size or you worry it into place. It means you bang on it lightly over and over and over again until it's the way you want it. So when we worry, what we're doing is focusing on something over and over and over again, but we focus on what we're afraid of. You focus on what you don't want. And as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you? Um, again, it's using your imagination to create something that you're afraid of and something you don't want. Not a good use of your imagination. So the first step in changing anything is catching yourself doing whatever it is you do. Catch yourself on what you're thinking of. Catch yourself with what you're visualizing and what you're giving emotion to. And basically not doing that, stopping it, and then saying, what do I really want? That's what I'm afraid of, but what do I want? And focus on that, which sounds really easy and really isn't. <laughs> so there are many, many different methods for working with that. And I'm sure we will discuss several of them <laughs> during the course of the evening in my conversation with Eva. So that's tonight's metaphysical musing. And let's go right to having some fun. You with us, Eva? Yes, sir. I am. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for being on the show. And you sent me a whole bunch of different topic possibilities, and the attractor field idea just grabbed me. So uh, why don't you give people a quick introduction to what your work is, and then let's go right into talking about attractor fields. Okay. Um, 
my work. That's you, you said we only have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry um, about that. You can find me at evaher.com. I've authored two books. One of them is a book that's my story, and it's called Agape, which is a Greek word meaning my perspective of that word means unconditional love for your fellow mankind. So it's called Agape, the intent of the soul, because love is the intent of the soul. The second book is a new book, which happens to be a very exciting book called Consciousness, Bridging the Gap Between Conventional Science and the New Science of Quantum Mechanics. It consists of 11 chapters, and each chapter is an interview with a person who I consider to be one of the world's foremost luminaries in the area of science of consciousness. And it, they will all be either a physicist or an engineer or a psychologist or, or uh, there's even one philosophist, Christian De Quincey. And I ask, I can, since my background's in litigation, I conduct my, in, my interviews like a deposition. <laughs> I ask all of the questions that you would want to know. I ask questions that stump them because, you know, that's what lawyers do. And um, so it's, I find it, it's a very interesting book. It's my favorite book. And it um, probably asks every question you would want to know and then some. That it's is, a book. That is, that's a fascinating book. That, Thank you. And, and you got to do exactly what I know I and probably lots of other people that listen to this show want to do. You got to talk to the, all those people that we look up to and ask the questions that haven't been asked. It's really a lot of fun. And I, I would like to say don't let the title scare you away because I'm just a woman. You know, I don't have a Ph.D. in physics, don't even have a bachelor's in physics. It's not that scary. You just have to read it sentence by sentence. That's all. And then I'm a medical intuitive, and I'm also an alternative medicine mentor where I helped you to learn how to detect disease early in your preventive medicine is what it is. Learn and detect early, prevent, and don't get it. So that's what I do. And then I host two radio shows, The Eva Her Show and Revealing Talk Radio, and Infinite Consciousness on BBS Radio. And you can find me all at evaher.com. Please go to my Facebook, The Eva Her Show. Like me, friend me, so you can keep up with what I'm doing because I do what I do to help you. And that's it. That's my story. Stick into it. <laughs> and a pretty amazing story it is. Thank you. So when you when you sent me the list of things that we might talk about, all of which were fascinating topics. The one that grabbed me was the idea of attractor fields, um, which sounds like something out of Star Star Trek, you know, tractor field, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tractor field. And, uh, which what really you... work like tractor fields. I know, I know. So why don't you give us a, a an overview of that whole idea? Well, okay, and also be patient with me, please. I'm recovering from the flu, and I have a stopped-up nose, and I probably sound like i got a clothes pin on my nose, so just please ignore it if you don't mind my sniffles. Attractor fields, and I'm not a physicist, so this is all coming from a language that I can speak because linguistics is a problem. But in physics, there are these things, and I've, that's the best way I know how to say it, like magnets. It's the field of like around a magnet, in the best way I can describe it, that makes the magnets attract one another. And you know how hard it is if you have two opposite poles, especially if you have a very strong magnet, to pull them apart. You know, if you have a really strong magnet, like some ferromagnets, and you lay it on your desk, everything that's metal on your desk will zoom to that magnet. Well, that's exactly how thought works, especially and really only uh, if you're trying to do it quickly. If you're, if you're very cohesive and very grounded and you're thinking of these things, they will come to you very quickly. If you're not grounded and you think these things, you let little mind or your egoic mind, what I say runs, if you think about it, when you think thoughts, they cross your forehead from left, from uh Let's see, from usually from right to 
left or right, like you're reading, and you'll, you'll see them. Think right now. You'll feel it going across your forehead like a ticker tape. And so little mind, when you play those things over and over and over, if you have problems with your, your partner or your job, I hate this, I hate that, I hate this, I can't stand this, I can't stand that, then you are going to eventually create a magnetic field strong enough because we are electromagnetic beings that is going to attract something that I don't want or that doesn't feel good, something with a negative charge to you. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to change your life, a very important thing to do is to try to monitor those thoughts and make sure that whatever they are is something that you that feels good. And if you have to, a simple thing that you can do is get poster paper, like we used when we were in you know elementary school and junior high school to make a poster, and cut out pictures of things that feel good to you, or things that you really want. But be careful: is it something that you really want, or is it something that you want because you need a void field in it for a moment? Because if it's something that is you're wanting because you have a void, if you're a shopaholic and every time you get depressed, you need to go do something, want something, shop something, that's not something that you want. What you really are looking for is love or peace or no drama. So figure out which one of those things are you doing and then cut out the pictures of the things that it really is that you want and the things that really feel good. And when you forget or catch yourself doing it, go look at that thing because visualization creates like an etch-a-sketch. It etches it in onto your electromagnetic field, onto your Akashic record, so to speak, so that it's more likely to happen. Otherwise, it will be outside uh, your field of capabilities to manifest that enough <laughs> <laughs> well we're we're certainly going to kick it around more than that um so anything you know basically anything that you focus on with emotion that you keep doing over and over again is going to come to you so the trick is to figure out the positive thing that you want what you really want not what you're afraid you're going to get um and focus on that so that you're actually in control of what's going on. But as much as you can be anyway, because you have to remember we don't have complete free will because there's life lessons to be learned. Right. You know, and if you had free will, then you wouldn't have any life lessons to learn. But to create the greatest possibility to get that thing, the answer to, to what you just said, you're absolutely right. So obviously this is all true of the things we're aware of the things that you know we can hear ourselves saying we, the things that we understand that we want what about the things that we're not aware of that are going on somewhere in the background uh, then you manifest those subconscious things that you don't want Right. You know, I'm sick of this I'm sick of that I'm sick of this. it becomes a it actually, actually is an addictive habit you do it all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. It takes a big person to really admit and go inside. Because, you know, I, I'm an intuitive. And I read people all the time. And I, I'm proud to say that if I tell you I can read you, because I have little things that I can do to make sure, I have about a 95% accuracy rate. And I will say, have you, did this happen to you? Yes. Um, I, I don't think that you've dealt with it. Oh, yes, I've dealt with that years ago. And I'll say, okay, let's do a little test. And I have a little test that I do. And we can actually do that test on the air if you'd like. Sure. And, and if you have, if you fail this test, then you have not dealt with it. And you are fooling nobody but yourself. You are hurting nobody but yourself. You are not facilitating healing for anyone but yourself. You don't have to admit to the world that you did these things, feel this way, have this problem, because nobody really cares but you. 
So to go deep inside and truly evaluate what you do and what you are and what you think from a 365 degree perspective helps no one but you. And because we are only one, it really does help the whole world. But in your mm -hmm. individual life, it really helps you. So to deny it, it's not, you know, it, you're not making any progress. So, so, so what's the test? Okay. How I'd like um, for you to, the listening audience, when I say you, I'd like for you to pick a horrible thing. In fact, the most horrible thing that you've ever had happen in your life. And I would, it may take a second, so we may have a second or two of silence because people need to be able to, to, to you know, find it. But close your eyes and bring it up in your mind as if it were happening right now. Feel it. If you were molested, feel it. If you were abandoned, feel it as if it were happening right now. And when you find it, hold on to it for a second. And then I want you to give me a number of 1 to 10, with 1 being the least and 10 being the most. And usually I sit there for a minute and then I say, are you ready? So, David, you're going to be the, the um, tester here. So do you have something that you can find that was really hurt you? Sure. Can you bring it up and feel it? And, and you need to be honest with me about this so that you can convey to the audience whether it works or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got, got it? it. Yep. Okay. And you're feeling it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and can you give me a number on 1 to 10? Probably 6. Okay. Um, you don't have to tell us what it is, but we're going to do some tapping. Because this is a simple thing that people can do anywhere at any time, and no one has to know that you're doing it. So I want you to put both your feet on the floor and your right hand on your right knee and your left hand on your left knee. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. And I want you to tap right, left, right, left, right, left with your hands on your knees. And I want you to say, uh, I was really terribly hurt when I was, how old were you, David? 13. I was really hurt when I was 13. And I don't know if I'm, if I'm not telling the truth, you can fix it, but I don't know what to say. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. say something. And I really, it made me hate this person that did this to me. And you need to repeat after me if it's true. And sure. And it made me hate this person that did this to me. And it made me feel um, angry at myself for hating or ashamed, whichever the word is that you feel. And continue tapping. Mm -hmm. so you have to say it. And it made, was, me feel, made me feel afraid and ashamed. But... It's okay that I felt that because, a, go ahead, it's okay that okay. I felt that. It's okay that I felt that. Because God totally loves and accepts me. Because God totally loves and accepts me. And continue tapping, don't stop. I totally love and accept myself. And totally love and accept myself. It was not my fault that this thing happened. It was not my fault that this thing happened. I totally love and accept myself and forgive myself. I totally love and accept myself and forgive myself. And I'm a powerful spiritual being. I'm a powerful spiritual being. And I'm forgiven. And I am and forgiven. I, and I forgive. And I forgive. Okay, now I want you to put, and, and it really doesn't matter the words that you say. You just have to say the words, and if you did something to someone else, you can tap the same thing, okay? I feel guilty about doing this, or, and you, but you, it's best if you actually state what it is. I just didn't want to put you on the spot. So I want you to pull it back up, mm -hmm. and I want you to give me a number. About two. Okay, so the goal is... To, to get it down to where it's zero. 
Right. And it's never going to go away completely, at least not at first. And the point is to get it so when you breathe in, you go, and the breath literally goes through your abdomen like water through a sieve. Because if you'll notice, if you'll bring that feeling up again, please. Mm -hmm. And if you'll move your focus down to your abdomen, just up above your navel, that's where you feel it. And it may be as subtle as a butterfly wing. It feels very much like it feels, and you tell me if I'm wrong, like when a policeman comes up behind you and turns on the blue light. (laughs) <laughs> and you look in the mirror and you see that and you go, oh, my God, and you get this funny, sick feeling in your gut. Mm-hmm. Well, that's neurons firing. And science knows now that there are more neurons in your gut than there are in your brain. And neurons are nerve cells and nerve cells talk. So when you get that feeling in your gut, even though it's as subtle as a butterfly wing, that we're binary beings, yes or no, on or off, dead or alive. We're not anywhere in between. So if you get that feeling, you have not finished dealing with it. And when you get that feeling, what happens is a a sequence, a firing sequence is sent through your autonomic nervous system, much like Morse code, like that. Yep. And it gets to your brain in about eight milliseconds. And if you want interested in this work, you look at the work of Candace Pert, who wrote Molecules of Emotion, and the work of Roland McCarty and his team at HeartMath Research Institute. But a, a signal will go to your brain, and your brain will interpret that signal. It'll interpret the length of the signal, the space in between each signal, you know, like whether it's dots or dashes and how long the dash is. And, you know, and it will also importantly interpret the voltage that's pushing that signal through your system. In other words, how much emotion is attached to that signal. And so your brain in return will release neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, adrenaline, cortisol, you know, think chemicals, hormones in your body. And each signal is affiliated with the specific organ or system in your body. So if you repeatedly think something that has the same signal firing, if you were raped and resent it, particularly by a caregiver, and, ra- and rape can also mean being touched inappropriately by, a care- by someone who you, you don't want to touch you anymore, a spouse mm-hmm. that you don't love. Um, But when you get that signal over and over and over again, then it's going to inundate that particular organ or system that it's connected to. Like um, estrogen is connected to, you know, your ovaries and your cervix and your uterus and your breasts. So people that have been raped get breast cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. Right. You know, so I know we're about to come up to a break, but... So if you really want to get well or if you have some sickness, be truthful to yourself. Do you get that, do you get that subtle sense of heightened awareness in your gut? And fix it. So we will continue talking about this method, which is fascinating because I see pieces of other systems in it. Um, and we can talk about that. We're, we have a few minutes to the break. I want to let people know that if you would like to ask questions or make comments, you can do that through Twitter um, by tweeting to, cleverly enough, at Farkas Files, or you can just use the hashtag uh, Farkas Files. And I've got a browser window open waiting to see any messages that you send to me. So if you'd like to ask Eva a question or you have any comments about what's going on, please tweet us and let us know what what's on your mind um my guest tonight is eva her the amazing eva her um her website cleverly enough is eva her.com e-v-a-h-e-r-r.com and tell them again your the names of your two books eva agape the intent of the soul and the second one is consciousness Bridging the Gap Between Conventional Science and the New Science of Quantum Mechanics. And what I mean by consciousness is, God, what is there in science that it proves, not what does someone think, but what does someone know that proves the existence of a power power 
and how do we use it to better our lives? So. Sounds great. So we will be back to continue our conversation with Eva Her in just a few minutes here on the Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere, and we're going to hear more of it after the break. So don't go nowhere. Now back to the Farkas Files with David Franklin Farkas on Empower Radio. And we're back. And we're back on Empower Radio with the Farkas Files with my guest, Eva Herr. And we were just talking about um, the method you use to undo the effects of trauma um, in the past. And um, that's it's, it's a fascinating process because I pieces of it are reminiscent of um, EMDR, which is a system that's used for post-traumatic stress, where they do uh, stimulation on opposite sides of the body, usually with a little buzzer thing in each hand. Um, and some of the some of the words that are being used, I've heard in uh, the emotional freedom techniques, so is a really interesting, different way of using some things for in in new ways. Um, you were, you started to tell me who developed that. I have this friend. His name is Dr. Daniel Benor, B-E-N-O-R. And he is, like Norm Sheely, one of the trailblazers of alternative healing modalities. He's a holistic psychiatrist. And um, I don't know if you know or not, but five or six, four or five years ago, my daughter was raped by a gang. And um, I used every single holistic thing I could get my hands on to help heal her because, you know, hospitals weren't doing any good. And so Dan and I, we did a session with her via Skype, which he does do that if anybody's interested. And so I took Dan's, what he taught me, and my own personal thing, the thing about the gut and the, and the numbers and the mm-hmm. autonomic nervous system and the signaling, that's my thing. But the tapping thing is Dan's. And the reason that he did that was because, uh, as you know, emotional freedom technique is quite complicated. I mean, you got to get yeah. a huge manual and study it. Yep. You got to do 10 here and 10 there. And it was just too complicated. And he did this, and what the main important thing is, is breaking the sequence of the firing. Mm -hmm. And this works just as good without, you know, having to do all that studying and learning and complicated, you know, stuff. And you can even do it, like if you're in a business meeting and you get pissed off at, you know, what's Mm -hmm. going on. You can tap your feet right, left, right, left, right, left. If you're driving down the road and some road rage driver pulls out in front of you, you can tap right, left, right, left, right, left on your steering wheel. The only thing that matters is that it's bilateral. Right. So, and it works great. And so that's uh, why I do it. And it's the thing that I came up with, the part about feeling the subtle sense of heightened awareness. It's proof of the pudding. Inevitably, if I, you know, if if you get that symptom, if you if you get that heightened awareness, you either have or will get the disease associated with it somewhere down the road in your life, if right. you haven't already. Some people will say, "Oh, well, I've already had the cancer and I've already had it cut out." Well, we all know that we are. Um, manifested from higher frequencies to more dense frequencies. So just because the organ is gone does not mean that there's not still an etheric organ there that will and that can and will produce illness. Right. And obviously the more mysterious the illness is, the more likely it's coming from an emotional base and from something that you're not aware of, and the less likely that Western medicine, which is looking for physical cause, 
is going to have an intervention that works because they're looking for a substance. Yeah. They're looking for, for a pathogen or a substance or a poison or something they can point to that they can deal with. Um, and if it's something that's from your personal history um, that's in your energy field, that most doctors are not looking there. And it takes, it takes a tremendous amount of um, courage to do this. Mm -hmm. Because you really have to admit the truth to yourself that you really haven't dealt with it because you've worked so hard, say, for the last 10 years to fix this thing. And it really takes courage to do it. It takes courage to admit that you contributed to the problem, you know, that you... You know, you did whatever. If you're, if you happen to be the perpetrator, for example, say, right. I have a friend who has terrible breast cancer, and she'll tell me every day of her life, I've dealt with my problems. Um, I have a positive outlook. She's the most negative person I've ever been around. <laughs> I don't say anything, but. If we go to lunch, everything's wrong. The waiter's bad. The food's bad. I got more food on my plate than she did. Something's wrong with everything. But she would never admit that. So she's sick. Right. You know, so you got to be honest with yourself. Well, the, there are a number of approaches which make the assumption that the cause is unconscious and work without knowing what the cause is. So one of those is Ho'oponopono, um, Hawaiian uh, technique, which means making things right, where you take responsibility for whatever's manifesting in your life. Because whatever's manifesting in your life obviously is being caused by something in you. But the assumption is that what's causing it is... Um, what he's now, what Dr. Hugh Len is now calling it is bad data. That you have taken on beliefs, bad data, bad information, which are now running like a program in your system. And you need to address that data and let it go by talking to your inner child or your subconscious, however you want to look at it. That's and a for, great analogy. And forgiving yourself. And so there, so and and it's just repeating basically a mantra, um, which is I love you. Please forgive me. Uh, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. That's a great analogy, and and you're absolutely right. Until you admit that it's there, you can't let it go, and it doesn't mean that you're bad. It you're perfect in the universe. Everything about you is perfect. So say, okay, I did this thing. I'm sorry. I'll be done with it. You know? Right, right. But that Ho'oponopono takes it a step further and says that a lot of it has nothing at all to do with you. Maybe that, it doesn't. You know, that you've taken on by virtue of just being here and being part of the flow of consciousness and the flow of time, that you've taken on all kinds of things which we all accept as being real or true and they're just bad data they're they're not right and when you kinda like, you know you mean kind of like the flu you pass by a group of people who get a flu shot and everybody gets the flu and now you have it so <laughs> you didn't do anything you just got it right right Good you know analogy they're, yeah there there like are all it. kinds of things and it's it's something that you can work with all the time because you know as soon as you catch that there's something going on that you would like to be some other way, you can just do the process, which Dr. Hugh Len calls cleaning. You can just clean on that issue, taking responsibility that if it's there, it's part of you, but also that if it's there, it's just bad data. And that ba you can let go of that bad data and forgive yourself for having accepted it. Um, yeah. It's, which, is, which is fascinating because it doesn't go to the source of, of anything. It just says, well, I know it's there yeah. because I can see the result of it. I can and it see doesn't the, mean you're bad. 
It just means, I mean, because you're not. Right. You're not bad if you have cancer. You just have it. Right. So it's okay. Right. The other one I ran across that I, I've used a lot is the Sedona method. Have you run into that? Well, I'm not. I don't consider myself a healer. I'm more of a diagnostician. You know, mm -hmm. that just happens to be one thing that I people would when I would be reading them, they would always tell me they've dealt with it. So, right. source gave me a way to show them that they had it. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I have. I'm not familiar with it. Well, it's it's another letting go process. Um, and the the basic steps of it are, you know, whatever your focus is or whatever you feel stuck on is basically saying, could you let that go? Just could you? And if you could, would you? And if not now, when? It's really interesting because it tricks your mind into realizing that there are options and gives you the option of letting it go. Um, and again, that's something that you can do in the moment. It's it's so simple. It's something you can do in a meeting and while you're doing other things. Once you're used to doing it, you can go, oh, I'm caught here. You know, could I have. But I let this go. I have something else that I use for my own personal self. I've had mm -hmm. in in my early years, I had um, quite a bit of trauma, which was the thing that led to my um, spiritual epiphany. And I was probably the worst person in the world. To th I was a victim, okay? Everything happened to me. It was somebody else's fault. You know, I was one of those people. And so I wanted to, I had to figure out a way to stop thinking about it. Because I was constantly, constantly thinking, poor me, poor me, poor me. Especially in the bed at night. And I had depression. And so I figured out this technique where I would... The, the space from your right side of your head to the left side of your head on each side of your eyes, a rectangle box right across there, right where a little mind speaks. And I would visualize a chalkboard, just black, a chalkboard that's never been used. Nothing on it, no letters, no numbers, no pictures, no symbols, no words, no colors, nothing, no thought, Nothing. And I would hold that blackboard in my mind. And it sounds a lot easier than it really is. It's really very hard to do when you first start doing it because you, you want to, re it's, you have to focus to do it. And you want to relax. You'll find yourself falling asleep, actually, when you do it. So when you practice it enough, it's like anything else. If you want to get a degree in physics or, or science or English, you have to study and practice and do homework. So this is your homework. You hold that black box there. Every single night you practice for as long as you can before it makes you fall asleep. And when you get to the point where you can hold that black box for 15 minutes, man, you got it made. Because anytime anything bad happens, you can call upon that black box and have no thought, which is the goal of the soul, to not think but rather to observe. And so it brings you to the instant moment. With If you have no thought, you are in the moment. Right. And so I personally found that to be a very powerful tool. And people would say to me, oh, well, why can't we do white light? Because what is light? Information. What are we right. trying to do here? Inhibit information so that you're just in the moment. And it really helped me. And I'm to the point now when something bad happens, I can, it's almost like snapping my fingers, and I'm there right. by using that tool. So that's another tool that people can use to get in the moment and out of pain. That's a very clever visualization. There, there are so many techniques from all over the world for getting a single focus with, without any thought. Um, but that, that's really clever because it's, it, works. It's, it's, it works, but it's also not exotic. And I have one more, too. And that one's in the bed when you're thinking. You mm -hmm. know, when you can't go to sleep and all you can do is think about what that jerk did to me today or whatever it is, you know. My other one is I have two. A toothbrush, and you go in your bathroom, and you get under your hands and knees, and you clean your grout spotlessly. <laughs> 
The second one is if it's a pretty day, you go outside and you get yourself a three by three patch or four by four or five by five, whatever it is, and pick every single weed. I don't care what size it is. You get acutely focused on that patch and make it perfect because you can't think and be acutely focused at the same time. Can't do it. It's impossible. So there are two tools when you get to where you, 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 first of all, you force yourself to get off the couch or out of the bed from your depression. Go pick up the toothbrush and clean your grout or force yourself to get out in the sunshine. And there's a new book, by the way, called Earthing by Stephen Sinatra and James Oshman, who's this very wonderful um, biophysicist. And Stephen Sinatra is a famous holistic cardiologist called Earthing. In other words, play in the dirt. There, It has an electron exchange that goes on there. So you do those two things, and when you get stuck and in your pain body, those three things right there will buy you out of it if you just really do it. You can't half do it. you got to really do it. Right. Well, that, that's an interesting name for the method in the book because earthing is what um, Brits and people from Australia call we, what they use for what we call grounding. Oh, interesting. Uh, they talk about earthing. Even even with electrical systems, they talk about earthing it, not uh, grounding it. Um, so I, I don't know if that's where he I bet it is. I he haven't read it, it yet. Um, he's coming on my show this uh, Sunday night, I think, about this book. Um, but I noticed lots of stuff in there about using some copper tubing and putting things around your bed and grounding them. And But I haven't read it. So if you want to know, then listen to me on BBS Radio Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time to hear Stephen Sinatra talk about earthing and heart disease. Interesting. And we'll find out. Yep. Well, some of the stuff you're describing, I've been hearing for years from my dowsing friends um, about ways to create various kinds of grounded systems around a building or, you know, any number of other things to get rid of problems. So it um, be interesting to hear what he has to say. And I'm quite excited, especially since I just had a heart attack. So I'm into in finding out any new thing going on with cardiovascular disease. You know, what, what was that? You're just dropping that? I just had a heart attack? What are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, didn't I tell you about that? No. In September, I had the mother of all heart attacks. But because for the last probably decade I've been a huge proponent of amino acids, which are the building blocks of everything. I take Mm -hmm. Total Amino Solutions by um, Janissa, and I do Empower Plus multivitamin mineral supplement, and I'm religious about it. And um, I had a heart attack, a big one. And I had this huge aneurysm on the back of my heart, and they put a stent in that day in the emergency. And then they came in that night and said, okay, we put one instant stent in today. We're going to do four more next week. Next month, we're going to do four bypasses, and we're going to put you on a heart transplant list. No and dear. I, I said, no, thank you. And the doctor looked at me and said, lady, you're going to die. And I went, no, I'm not. And he rolled his eyes at me. I said, you don't know what I know or who I know. And I'm going to heal my heart with alternative medicine. You just watch me. That was in September the 2nd when that happened. So um, I've called, thank God, for radio shows and books and things. Friends like you have radio shows. I've used every resource I had and called out to the world what's going on on the cutting edge. And that's what I've been doing. I haven't seen a cardiologist until last week. And the only reason I went, to, or three weeks ago, and the only reason I went to him then is because I want to get some allopathic test to, to see whether or not what I'm doing is working. Right. The aneurysm disappeared. <laughs> um, they told me that my heart was clogged 90% and 80% in two, two or three, uh, four of my uh, arteries. Mm-hmm. They told me that my heart was barely functioning. Well, my In 30 days, I had a 28.8% increase in my heart function. 
That was back mm-hmm. in December. It's probably much greater than that by now. Last week, I went and got a CT scan of my heart because I want to prove that what I'm doing is really working. Right. And I can tell you, just let me grab this piece of paper. I'm in the, um, they said my heart was, calcium was like almost a 99%. My calcium score right now is 65. Anything under 80 is really nothing you even have to worry about. It's kind of like normal life, according to what I found on the internet. Mm-hmm. And my, um, let's see, what is it? I've got to find this other thing. Um, well, I can't, I can't find it because I feel like I'm under pressure. But my heart is in, oh, in the 90 percentile range. Oh, here it is. This places the patient in approximately the 90th percentile for age and implies mild arteriosclerotic plaque and likely minimal to mild coronary artery narrowings. Well, <laughs> in September, they told me that I had a heart of an 80-year-old and it was totally blocked something's working right and, and the aneurysm is gone that's fantastic with only nutrition mm-hmm. you know so i want everybody out there to know there is hope they did put me on statins let me know if i need to shut up okay <laughs> they did put me on statins for a, you know when i came out of the hospital and i had to do it and some other medicines until i could get a treatment plan in place right but the statins almost killed me. Do you know what they do? It, it literally dissolves your muscles. And so when the doctor came in, he said, uh, okay, here's your drugs to go home with. And I looked at him and I said, he goes, this is the greatest new statin for your cholesterol. And I went, do you know what it does? And he went, well, I've read about it. And I went, it depletes CoQ10. Do you know what that does? And he went, well, I've read about it. And I go, okay, where's my prescription for CoQ10? If you know that this statin is going to tear my, make my heart fall apart and every other muscle in my body, it hurts so bad, David, I couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. Where's my CoQ10 prescription? And he just looked at me. And so this other doctor said to me one day, you know, Eva, sometimes people have to put their kids through college. So I just want people to know, if you have something wrong with you, my daughter was self-mutilating. She would cut her leg with a razor down to the bone. She got addicted to street drugs after she got raped because she didn't tell anybody. And she was trying to, you know get rid of the pain. We cured her in nine months with nutrition. We didn't have to go do the eight thing, you know, the AA, I'm so-and-so and I'm addicted to so-and-so. Right. We didn't have to do that. We just did good nutrition. And she's well. And I'm getting well. And I imagine, I'm guessing here, that my total bill for this is probably going to, and I'm guessing, okay, please don't hold me to this number, (laughs) it's going to be around Mm $7,000. Well, my hospitalization for that heart attack was like 50-something thousand dollars. So this is something people can actually do. I mean, you might have to scrape your pennies up, but it's doable. And you actually get well. People see me now and they go, the, well, that doctor, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that doctor, when I went to see him three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I took in, I went and had an echocardiogram, and I got this this other thing, and he looked at it, and he went, lady, I don't know <laughs> what you're doing, but don't stop. Right. Because you just went from a lady who was guaranteed to die in five years to a lady who doesn't have to worry about dying from a heart attack right. in 30 days. You know, the first time I heard a story like that, it wasn't about heart disease, um, was a woman I knew in a nutrition company that I was involved in a long time ago. And um, her immune system crashed. 
she found herself in you know a, an isolation tent in a specialized hospital and they couldn't figure out what was going on she basically had the same kind of immune function as someone with advanced aids and the doctors came in you know the team came in and basically said put your your house in order there's nothing we can do for you and she just looked at him and went you're fired <laughs> Clearly, you do not have an answer for me, and clearly, because you don't have an answer, you think I'm going to die. I'm not going to die. I've got a kid to raise. I'll figure this out. And she found the nutritional scientist whose work was the basis of these supplements and turned it around. And this is 20 years later, and she's fine. Well, so, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, so, I've witnessed it in my life. Those yeah. pharmaceuticals were killing me. And um, I've been off of that statin now for about a month, and I finally feel like a normal human being. Mm -hmm. You know, if I didn't have a stuffed up nose, I'd feel great. You wouldn't even know I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, stuffed up nose is not a problem. <laughs> it's an annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> so please, people, if you're sick, please, if you want to really get well, have questions email me i'm not a doctor i'm just a, a medical alternative medicine journalist and i'll share everything i know with you and a pretty amazing one you're also a medical intuitive so you have more than just the uh the information you've gotten by interviewing people so uh you've got oh, an incredible background Thank you, David. And I have to say, I'm very black and white. I'm not woo-woo at all. So, I, <laughs> I think people got that. <laughs> <laughs> for, Thank for all you your, so much. For, for all your woo-woo capabilities, <laughs> you are one of the most grounded people I've ever met. <laughs> Thank you, David, for having me. Thanks for Thank coming on. Thank your thanks. listeners for tolerating me. And <laughs> well, you know, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story and your daughter's story because those are very, very powerful stories and very, very personal. And I appreciate that you're willing to do that. I didn't share and it'd be useless. In fact, Jessica's story is in PMH Atwater's new book. Hmm. And I would also be very grateful if you would go to Care2, Care and the number two, dot com and search for Eva Her and like my in daily inspiration and go to inspiremetoday.com and look up it's a uh, I'm one of their luminaries whatever that word means and <laughs> and go and please like my page and comment we'll dialogue if you want to but please support me because I do it for you it gives me courage to go on. Please go to my Facebook, The Eva Her Show. Like me and friend me. You have no idea the courage that it gives me to go on every day and do the things that I need to do. Thank you for doing all the things that you're doing, and thank you for being on the show. Um, it's always wonderful to have you on. And thank we'll do you. this again. I'll see you soon. Okay. You know what they say, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> good if night, any, David. Good night, good everybody. Night. Good night, Eva. If you would like to hear more about my work, um, you can go to househealing.com, where you can get information about my work clearing buildings and land, which is why it's called house healing, but also people and businesses and situations and all manner of things. I think my new tagline is I'm the village shaman for the global village. Um, so if you go to the contact page, you can find all the ways to contact me, including my scheduling calendar. I do a free 20 minute uh, analysis. Next week, our guest is Lon Milo Duquette, who is just an extraordinary person with a vast knowledge. So look forward to seeing you then. This is The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere. See you next week. <laughs>